I'd like to introduce Charles Morrill. He is a uh, creative, he's a woodworker, um, and he works at Gaston Wyatt right now, um, just doing some amazing, amazing work uh, in trim, molding, CNC, CAD, uh, you name it. It's really fantastic. Um, but I'll let Charles explain the story. Let's give Charles a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to start uh, a little weirdly. I mean, it wouldn't be fun if it, if it wasn't weird, right? So um, I want you all to close your eyes. Okay, everybody close your eyes, please. All right, please, if you would that. Um, uh, let's assume that for some crazy reason, you've just bought that lottery ticket, okay? And um, the, the prize, the, the whatever it is, is $2 billion, okay? You are one of the richest people on the planet. Now, of course, you're going to, you know, okay, so there's the car, there's the, you know, the whatever, the beach vacation and all that. But then, then you're going to figure out what you want to do with your life, and you're going to realize that you got to do something, and maybe you ought to get to your thing that you really want to do, right? Okay, everybody got it? Now open your eyes, and I'd like to suggest that you do that. Okay, and that's bizarre, but if I won the lottery, I would be right here right now, and I would be doing the same things that I do today. Maybe it'd be a little easier, but anyway. I, I just want to suggest that you think that way, because you only go around once, and I was your age once, and it seems like 10 minutes ago, and now I'm 63, but that's okay, because I won the lottery. Anyway, I work for a place called Gaston and Wyatt, and that's my friend Mike Coran here, and we really do, uh, we do mill work, and uh, we do interiors of houses and exteriors. Uh, we're going to do everything in a house that's like not a two by four, okay? So all of these boards, uh, all of this sort of thing, uh, we have done some, some great stuff over the years, and here are just churches, uh, Here's some other things. I like that library, nice color. Here's some more things. I like the lilacs. Uh, anyone need a front door? Yeah, there you are. I like this. This is, a, you know, that's even more of a front door, I guess, in a way. That's a house in Boston we recently did a lot for. There's another one. Um, all of these complex carvings were originally designed on a computer and run on a CNC router. Okay. So, and of course, there's this local place, and we've done some work for them. One of the things that I've done personally is to do some work on Mulberry Row at Monticello. I built uh, recently a 24 spindle uh, spinning jenny on Mulberry Row that would have been used uh, uh, by some of the enslaved workers there. And uh, we're trying to find out what that was like. It wasn't easy. And if you need a Chinese garden pavilion, we can do that too. Anyone need a Chinese garden pavilion? Did you dream of that when your eyes were closed? Well, anyway, just checking. We can, we'll be there for you. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted uh, to uh, uh, go through this and uh, tell you, we use uh, computers extensively. I bet at this point uh, about 100% of every project that we're going to do is originally drafted on computer. Um, and we've been working to um, develop uh, what is a, a 3D uh, PDF viewer, and what we'll do is we'll We'll design in, in, uh, in three dimensions using a program called Inventor, and then we can give uh, a customer and an architect a, a view of that. We can actually send them uh, uh, a view so they know exactly what the room is going to look like. We can also see how things are going to maybe crash in together and not work. Uh, so all that sort of thing that you saw with the Piedmont building that's coming up um, is the type of thing that we do. Uh, this is our current drafting department. It was hard to get a picture of it because it's so small. This is our new drafting department up there on the second floor. It was hard to get a picture of it because it's going to be so large. So this is clearly the future. 
Where we're going is, I would imagine about half of every project uh, in, in terms of employees and in terms of money is going to be, uh, and we're going to involve people using computers uh, to draft the parts and also to run them on our CNC router. That's our current CNC router. We need another. That's about uh, five or six feet by 16 feet long. And it does a great deal of uh, our parts for cabinets or anything else. And I've got some parts that we ran on it. I'll show you later. Uh, up in the, uh, the other building, I, I'll have a table up there. And you can see some of the three-dimensional parts that we've actually run on this. You might find that interesting. Um, let's see. I'm going to move ahead here. Uh, Computer-aided design has always fascinated me from the very beginning. Um, uh, and actually, in some ways, we were both born the same year, around 1956. Uh, anyway, uh, computer-aided design, everybody talks about CAD. I don't suppose anyone in the audience knows who coined the term. Does anyone know? Who invented that? Everyone talks about computer-aided design, CAD. Anyone know, by any chance? Anyone want to take a try at that? Got a wonderful guy, guy up, up at MIT named Douglas T. Ross. And Ross had this whole vision uh, back in 1960 and he said, uh, I, I just, uh, he, he set all this out in a wonderful paper, and he said, uh, it is hoped that the result of this effort can be blended with the automatic programming of numerically controlled mach machine tools to provide an efficient mechanism for going almost directly from the requirement for a machine part to the finished product. So he had that vision in 1960. That was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, very, very, very early on, he had a whole group at MIT, and uh, they were trying to come up with this whole CAD program. And uh, anyway, there was a guy there, just a, a young man. This is a, a wonderful man. Uh, this is Ivan Sutherland, who was a doctoral student there who just sort of came in sideways, and he just wanted some computer time. And so they said, yeah, sure, um, sure. And they helped him out a little bit. And they turned around and realized that he had developed the first real graphic user interface and the first true CAD program. And, the, and everyone looked at this and they said, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly what we want to do. And so here he is drawing chairs on this very primitive computer. I think it had something, a memory of like 500K, which made it one of the most impressive computers of the day. Uh, so anyway. Anyway, he, uh, they once asked him about it, and he said uh, someone, he was receiving some sort of award, and someone asked him, how could you possibly have done the first interactive graphics program, the first non-procedural programming language, and the first object-oriented software system all in one year? And his answer was, well, I didn't know it was hard. Hmm. I think he was going after his dream, and that's kind of my point about all this. Uh, let's see. Um, earlier, my father had spent several years working with Ross's teams, and I remember a version of Sketchpad in my dad's office at IBM in 1962-63. I uh, actually used that program. I was kind of unimpressed, though, because it was black and white and not even in color like Bugs Bunny or other cartoons. So I guess it all depends on your perspective. Anyway. Before my dad died last month, he told me something. He said, I'm just so glad that all this stuff we wrote back in the 1950s and 60s has finally got into the hands of people who can afford it and use it. That would be you. And so I tell you, if I were young, where I would be is here. And where is Eric? I would be listening to everything he says. <laughs> And I would take every class of his, and I would hang out later and drive the nuts and bolts in the new CNC router. Uh, I really mean this. That's what I would do. In fact, maybe I'll do it anyway. I I'm going to leave you folks with uh, five tips from uh, my dad, who was a systems analyst, one of the first in the world. Uh, he said always, stay curious. That's number one. I mean, how did the concrete get flat here? Does a person have to do it, or can a machine do it? Number two, if a pencil is faster, use it. Number three, when learning a new piece of software or embarking on a new project, keep a journal of your discoveries, date the pages, see step two. That's the pencil, okay? Step four, RTFM, read the effing manual. <laughs> no one does, absolutely no one, right? If you read the manual, and well, never mind. It's, it's going to work. So 
Now, now, sometimes you haven't got a manual with you, right? So see step three. That's where you're keeping your journal. You will soon have your very own. Okay? And step six, I guess, would be lather, rinse, repeat. You get the idea, anyway. So um, if this sort of thing interests you, I, we'd love to talk to you when we post a position or just sort of anyway. Follow your dream. Don't give up. You only go around once. Stay out of debt, right? Uh, and uh, have a good time. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.